Hello there, this is the long-awaited 4x4 tutorial. I'm going to be teaching you a very simple method which is, you know, easy to use, easy to learn, and doesn't really require you to learn that many algorithms. Um, this isn't the only method, I'm not sure what this method's called, I'll have to look that up. Um, there's also, you know, there's a cage method, there's a K4 method, which both of them are supposed to be pretty good. I don't know much about them, but, um, you know. So, the cubes themselves, um, there are two big cubes that you can get for the 4x4. We have the Rubik's brand and we have the Ishin brand. You're going to notice a few big differences just from looking at them. The Rubik's uh, 4x4 is a lot bigger and it's a lot heavier, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, the pieces are kind of thicker gauge, uh, they're, they're really durable pieces, and um, what else can I say about the puzzle? It doesn't move very well out of the box. And um, you're gonna have to do some work on it. And by work, I mean you know solve it a few times, take it apart, clean it out, spray it down with lube, all that kind of stuff. But that goes for pretty much any puzzle. Um, what else? Oh yeah, the stickers. You're gonna need replacement stickers if you want to use a Rubik's 404. The stickers they give you are horrible, and they will start peeling within the first um, probably the first 20 solves. You'll notice peeling, which is absolutely ridiculous. No excuse for that at all. And, um, I don't know, but you're gonna have to deal with it. Just, you know, buy, buy new stickers. Not a big deal. These are cute tiles. Um, whatever. Make your own stickers if you have to. Okay, while we're on the topic of stickers, um, Ishin has a very strange feature where we have this pink side rather than the orange side. Um, you know, kind of different. I kind of like it. Um, what else? It's smaller, it's lighter. It turns amazing out of the box. This is pretty much how it turns out of the box. This has been lubed, this has been loosened a little bit, but, you know, it does move very well out of the box. Um, one thing you're going to notice about um, the Ishin 4x4 is that it doesn't pop at all. You'll never pop one of these, um, well, at least I have never popped one of these, which is a miracle, because rather than a Rubik's 4x4, which is, you know, one piece is one piece, and if it pops, put it back in, on the Ishin, for every piece you see, there's two or three pieces that you don't see. And I have had the misfortune of taking this thing apart, because I'm an idiot, and it's not a pleasant experience putting this thing back together. There are way too many pieces, and um, just don't. <laughs> don't do it. Alright, the method itself. Let's go over it. Let's first just give these a scramble so you can understand what I'm talking about. So here is the method. This is what I'm going to be teaching you. Basically, this is a very intimidating object that I'm holding right here. This might seem like it's very hard to solve. And yeah, it is very hard to solve if you don't know what you're doing. If you do know what you're doing, all you're doing is really taking something that's complicated and reducing it into a bunch of things that are less complicated. So basically, we're going to do this in a few steps, and by the end of these few steps, the cube's going to look like this, where, you know, everything's kind of organized. We got all the centers done, these edges are paired, and, you know, it's a lot simpler at this point. So, like any good solution, what we're going to do is make the problem um, a bit more simple. Okay, so to start, we're going to start building centers, and we got to build all six centers before I can go to the next step. Um, I recommend that you use the color scheme that you use for your 3x3 solves, because uh, it'll just help you out with recognizing what goes where next, and you'll understand that more in a second. So normally, when I would be doing this, I'd look for, well, see, like, red is almost done, so I might start with red, but usually I just start with white, because I'm used to doing white. Anyways, the first center is extremely intuitive. All you're going to do is make one pair, and make another pair, and smash them together, and then you have a full center. So if you're starting on white, you're going to go directly opposite to yellow. It's very strongly advised that you do, uh, for your first two centers, two opposite centers. It'll really help you out later, and um, it's just way faster this way. So I know that white is opposite yellow, so I have to place yellow opposite white. Um, on a 4x4, we have the freedom to place centers wherever we want relative to one another. But we have to place them correctly uh, relative to one another, otherwise it's unsolvable. So, for this, um, 
Well, I wasn't really explaining that. It's gonna be suck. Okay. So yeah, we gotta place yellow here. Um, for the next one, we're just gonna make a pair on the top, and this is pretty simple. Just you know, make a pair, move this out of the way, and then of course we broke the bottom, so we gotta bring it back, and then you know, make another pair. And rather than just bring them together, which would destroy the bottom, um, we have to actually do a little bit of a weird thing. What we have to do here is, anytime we're going to wreck a center by doing one of these, it's a situation where we can use this little trick. By lining up two in a straight line, uh, two pairs in a straight line, and replacing the pair that's in the correct spot with the other one, moving this out of the way, and then bringing this back down, we can get both pairs, and, and uh, of course we keep the, the blue. Okay, so after I do those those uh, those two, the white and the yellow, I'll always go to green. And I'll always go to green because when I'm scrambling or solving a 3x3, three three, I usually have green in the front, so I'm most comfortable with that color scheme. And of course, um, at this point, we, we still got a lot of freedom in how we're moving, so getting the green center is no big deal at all. You know, just make one pair, make another pair, smash them together. All right. So this is the point where you start to need to know your color scheme a bit more. I know that when green's in front and yellow's on top, orange is on the right side. And if you don't know that, just look at your 3x3. Three three. So I gotta make another pair and bring it in here. So I can make a pair like that. But again, I can't move this down because it wrecks green. So I gotta make a straight line, replace the one that's in the right spot, with the other one, move it out of the way, and then bring this back. And that'll get me all three. Pretty much home free at this point. I got my last two centers. And there are many cases for the last two centers, but they're all pretty intuitive. Just, you know, shift them around until you get them. And then, you know, if you come up with this case where it's just lined up again, it's just line them up, replace the one that's in the right spot, spin this around uh, 180 degrees and bring this back up, and that'll get you all of your centers. Okay, just for the sake of explanation, I'll do a, a, another example of that, but a bit quicker. Um, so yeah, get two pairs, make the, make the white, make a pair in the top, Second pair. You get green if you want, whatever color you want. Get the next one. And then just your last two centers. A few cases, you don't have to know them all there. Now, a very easy way to check your centers. You're probably going to make some mistakes when you're a beginner at this. A really easy way to check your centers, if you're not familiar with the color scheme, is just take a corner, like this one, and place it where it's supposed to go. Now, corners never lie, so this corner is telling us that this is right. Blue, red, white. And then just make sure that all your opposites are right, so yellow is opposite white obviously, red is opposite orange, and green is opposite blue. So in this case, I'm, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is all correct.